The AeroPress is amazing, but if there's one common complaint about the AeroPress, it is that it can only make one cup at a time. For that reason, I developed a technique a few years ago that could solve that problem. But there was one big issue. Since I was completely new to YouTube, my video explaining this technique was a little bit unclear, and as a result, it got relegated to the lower ranks of YouTube, so many people actually never learned about it. So today I wanted to revisit this technique and make a short and clear video that can explain why this technique is so epic. Oh, and by the way, if you stick around till the end of this video, I will let you in on a big secret, a new product that Aeropress is currently developing and is planning to launch soon, which could change the world of coffee as we know it. So stick around for that. Originally, the Aeropress was envisioned as a single cup brewer, but Alan Adler, the inventor, always was a big proponent of using the bypass technique to make multiple cups at the same time. Bypassing simply means brewing a stronger cup of coffee and then diluting it by adding hot water. It's the same principle used when making an Americano. Bypassing has also been used frequently among the winners of the Aeropress World Championship. But to be honest, I was never a big fan of it. From an extraction point of view, it simply isn't efficient. I would always feel like I was wasting out on some of the coffee I was brewing. So I came up with a technique that allows you to brew a bigger batch of coffee without having to rely on bypass at all. Today I'm going to use 25 grams of medium fine ground coffee, so that's a 1 to 16 ratio. If you have a cheaper entry level grinder like the Barata and Call or Time More C2, then grind a bit coarser and use 26.5 grams instead, so that would be a 1 to 15 ratio. This is grind setting 6 on the K-Max. I also use Asia filters because they just make the coffee way more tasty, just trust me on this one, but if you don't have them, then use two regular paper filters instead. Rinse the paper filters, zero out the scale, and then we start brewing. So first I add 200 ml of water rapidly. Hey, just a quick comment, as uh, I was uh, editing the video, I realized that uh, I forgot a crucial little step, which is blooming. So before you proceed, just add a little bit of water, maybe two to three times your dose. Give a, a little swirl, then just wait 15 to 20 seconds, and from there just proceed as normal. Okay, back to the video. Then I take the carafe off the scale and plunge. Be careful if you have a glass carafe. I'm using Capex plastic carafe, so I don't have to worry about breaking it. Now here comes the special part. Instead of plunging all the way down, I plunge one inch, maybe a little bit more. Then when I feel the resistance, I slowly lift my hand and let the pressure that is built push out the plunger. Then I just remove it at an angle. Then I do the same thing again, insert the plunger, push it down one inch. When you feel the resistance, just let the pressure push it back out, remove it at an angle and then repeat. I just repeat this procedure until all the water is gone and I hear a hiss when I push down with the final push. Then I add 200 ml again. So this is the second half of the water. At this point, I insert the plunger, pull up slightly to make a vacuum seal. Now we added the last half of the water, so we're just gonna wait until 2.30, and then we're gonna plunge it, and then we have our beautiful big batch of AeroPress. Okay, 2.30. And at this point, you don't press too hard, just add both hands, and then let the body weight push the plunger down. And then when you hear the hiss, you know that you're done. You just press out the last little bit. 
take off your AeroPress and then here you have your big batch. Now I'm gonna pour myself a cup. Hmm. Quite nice body and aftertaste. Yeah, very good balance. This is an Ethiopian natural. It has that nice fruity strawberry character and a really full body that you get from that extra steep with the AeroPress. So overall, I would say this is a pretty good brew and you definitely have enough coffee to share with an extra person. I find this technique is really useful when you're traveling, you're camping, and uh, you have to make AeroPress for more people than just one, then uh, it's a real lifesaver. So the special thing about this technique is that normally AeroPress would be considered an immersion brewing method because that last bit of water that is retained in the grounds is the same strength as the brew itself. But uh, by doing it this way here, first you make one brew and then you add water a second time, then that means that the water retained in the grounds is actually not as strong as it would be if you were brewing a normal AeroPress. And in that sense, this kind of turns it into a hybrid method where you're actually closer to uh, pour over in terms of extraction because you only have that very little uh, liquid retained in the grounds and it's a thinner concentration. So this might sound a little bit geeky, but it actually helps you to get more out of your coffee than you normally would. So it's for that reason I call this an epic brew method because you get a serving that's double the size of a normal serving and it's even more efficient uh, in the extraction. So yeah, if you ask me, this is something more people should experiment with. By the way, if you made it this far, now is the time to reveal the secret I was talking about earlier. So uh, a few months ago, I was a judge at an AeroPress competition and uh, I got talking to uh, one of the reps from the company. Uh, as you might know, Alan Adler is not the owner of the company anymore. It's a consortium, I think some Canadians have bought the company. And uh, what was revealed to me was that uh, AeroPress is actually working on making a larger size AeroPress. Uh, this is something Alan Adler was experimenting with for a while, but uh, he never really got around to making this extra big AeroPress. But from what I could understand, it's still one to two years out in the future. So until then, if you want to brew a big AeroPress batch, and you don't want to be bypassing, I think you should give this technique a try. If you have any questions about this technique on the AeroPress in general, then leave a comment down below. Oh, by the way, I also have a blog post about this technique where I go over some frequently asked questions, so I'll leave a link to that down in the description as well. And if you're on the lookout for even more AeroPress tips, then I have another video here where I share five of the most fundamental AeroPress tips that I know of. So click that video and then I'll see you over there.